Look him in the head with the crankbait what's happening. Now I'm about to rip it out of his head. There he is. That's all me. That was so sick. How you thinking, Bone Gang? And welcome back to another live recording of the Pelican Bone Outdoors podcast. Today we got my boy, Heath Panganaban. What's up, brother? What's up, man? I appreciate you having me, man. It's been a while since we kicked it in real life, but um, at least we get to connect, man, on the uh, on the podcast here. So yeah, dude, it's been it's been a hot minute, as they say. <laughs> it has. So uh, Heath and I met. Oh, how many years ago was that? I don't even. know. I mean, honestly, probably in like, I'd say 2017. Yeah, 2017. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So um, Heath started Yak Tribe, and I'll let him go into that in a minute. And I met through that met him through that. Um, I don't even know who it was that first came in contact with Yak Tribe, and then like just, like from your end, yeah, like from I mean, over it could here. Have, it could have been like um, Xavier. I th- or, oh, it was. I think it was Xavier. It could have been Phil. Xavier. Yeah, Phil, yeah. Um, David, those guys. But yeah, Xavier was kind of Xavier, Phil, David. Those those were like some front runners for your area. Yeah, right on. Yep. So we got linked up with them and uh, got really into the to the Yak Tribe thing, man. The Yak Tribe does a yeah. lot of good things. Um, why don't you go ahead and just explain a little bit about? Yeah, hey, what definitely. Yak Tribe but, is. Hey, you you came out, you came out right to our first our first kind. It wasn't even a meetup, but when we gave that kayak to Xavier, Xavier, yeah, absolutely. You you were at that. Yeah. And so that was literally our very very first endeavor in any sort of like outside of my city type thing really yeah so when we when we when we loaded up and headed to louisiana matt roberts connected with some sort of manager from dick sporting goods or something or something like that he got the kayak um he got that at his house me and my best friend john drove from tampa bay florida over to louisiana Showed up at my, Matt Roberts' house probably like 2 a.m. He still decides to do a fish fry and cook us dinner, and we're just like <laughs> exhausted. And then we and then we go and meet you guys, do that, you know, giveaway, and then we start we start fishing. So that's that's yeah, dude, that was the very beginning. So I say 2017, but actually, Vinny, it's been since 2016 because we did that in 2016. Wow. Man, yeah. it's been a while, huh? It's been a while. That's yeah, awesome. man. But Yak Tribe, like you were saying, Yak Tribe, man, it's just a it's just a community of kayak fishermen, kayak anglers. Um, and you can't see it on this banner. I'm actually posted up in my truck right now because we're at a campground in Georgia. But um, it's real people, real stories, uh, real connections, and it's it's lit. It's it's always been like that. So, you know, we're not like the biggest. You know, we probably don't have. We definitely don't have the most instagram followers you know if you if you type in you know kayak fishing there's like you know um kayak bass fishing um the boys over at yak addicts and you know we're not by any means like definitely the biggest following um but what i can say is like aside from those things then you know how it's always been it's always not a bit about the clout or the hype or any of those things it's been just having real connections outside of the social media world and uh, linking up, fishing, doing meetups and having a good time. And so that's pretty much what Yak Tribe is all about. And we just saw a need in 2015 in the very beginning to have and create a no drama, no conflict type community. And if you if you've been part of Yak Tribe for long enough, you know, um, we basically kicked any of those rats out that just causing drama. Um, it's always just been laid, laid back and cool vibes, hanging out with people. And that's what it's all about, man. Yep. I agree, man. It's been, it's been great. I need to get, I need to get in touch with some people though, man. It's been a while. Uh, I see Phil every now and then, but, uh, I've been wanting to get out with him. Uh, David, I ain't talked to in a while. Uh, yeah. Phil's the man. If you see him, if you see him around, around next time, tell him I said, Hey, cause, uh, he's a great guy. He's a great guide in yep. louisiana i mean that if, if you're looking to get on redfish he's a great guy to put you on it yeah he actually uh he lives in this um the area where i work at the firehouse so he lives cool. in my area so i run into him and in my firehouse is a um a spot where they uh devote the voting a polling place so he 
I see him if I'm working on a, uh, on electric day. I'll see him come by and everything. But nice, yeah, nice. he's a good dude. He's a real Very good cool. dude. He really is. Like, yeah. So you you don't do much uh, bass fishing, huh? You most y'all just straight in shore. I mean, funny enough is like someone just commented on my Facebook post. Um, I just posted this picture on Facebook uh, on a campground, and they were like, "Go to this other campground in so and so state, and it's got great great bass fishing." And I commented back, hey, it sounds really great, but you lost me at bass fishing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will say I only bass fish if I am like, like back in the day, if I'm living at like an apartment and it has a lake, I'm definitely right. going to fish that lake. I know we have great bass fishing in Tampa Bay, Florida, in like golf courses and lakes and all around Florida, but I just grew up on the salt. And so it's really hard to get me into the freshwater bass fishing, although I've said if there's some bass fishermen out there that want to take me out, show me the ropes, I'm happy to do it. But I will. the only time I catch bass is if, like I said, I'm fishing a lake with my son or something, or I accidentally catch one while I'm fishing brackish water. That's that's it. Uh. <laughs> and so I, I, I grew up brackish water fishing, grew up saltwater yeah. fishing. You know, it was always shrimp on a cork or shrimp on the bottom. I didn't even get into artificial back in the day. Right, right. But when I got my kayak, there was um i was still learning where to take it to go fishing so the few spots that i did take it uh one was uh, by, uh bayou st john in new orleans and then uh this little spot actually where i moved this right down the road from me but before i even moved here i would always hit that uh the little canal and um i started bass fishing because you know i didn't know where to go yet well <laughs> i didn't go where i didn't know where to go until i met yak tribe and people started showing me where to go yeah. but uh Dude, I started learning how to bass fish. And man, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm hooked. I'm hooked on it, dude. Now, don't get me wrong. If I had to choose one fish, it's going to be a redfish. You know, I'm, I'm not, I will never give up inshore fishing. Sure. But, dude, I think, I think if you gave bass fishing a try just because of the difference in it, mm -hmm. it would be, a, it would be a separate addiction. But I mean, I, I, get I believe that. I will say, like, I have, and I have some videos on YouTube, and um, I've gone bass fishing. And I can see if like, okay, for instance, like when I was, when we were living on the road and I was hitting up like Southern Moon Outfitters and spending time in Georgia and, you know, we would stay on a lake and like, I loved it. You know, I'd go out there, fish for bass, you know, a bass on top water, or spinning bait, something like that. I could see how, if that was my only option, right, how <laughs> I could, I could just become like addicted to like colors and lures and like figuring everything out and just, you know, pulling out like the biggest bass I can. And it's still only like this big, you know, where's the camera, you know, like this big, <laughs> I get, I get the fight for like the biggest green fish. But again, like I grew up in Tampa Bay, like we're a peninsula within a peninsula surrounded by salt water. Right. So it's like my wife and I talked about before we moved back to Tampa Bay, we were actually going to, um, start a new life you know like post up and just live in um chattanooga tennessee we really loved that area um my wife really loved that area like more than anything and i told her i was like i'll definitely you know i'll fish for bass i'll fish for catfish i know people but as long as you promise me every three months i can take a week or two week trip down to the salt and just you know go to pack yeah. and post up it's just i can't get it out of my system man right yeah. right yeah, we talk about uh, in nine years, my wife retires, and uh, we talk about possibly, you know, picking up and moving somewhere. And I would love, like the Chattanooga, I love Tennessee. I love that the Smokies. Um, but I would have the same issue. I'd have to have, I'd have to break away to get back yeah. down to the salt. Yeah, and from Chattanooga, like that, from Chattanooga down to Louisiana, I've done that trip actually. I, I. I needed it so bad. I legit, I have a video of this. I drove through a hurricane to get from, <laughs> I just had to get, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go to salt and it takes like eight and a half hours. If you're yeah. like gunning it, you know, to get, to get to down by you guys. It's not that bad. Y'all have uh so I guess the, what different species do we have besides the snook? Is there any other brackish water? Uh, tarpon. Really just juvenile okay. juvenile tarpon um yeah y'all got sheep's head i i can tell you, i know they're out there and i've seen people catch them actually i saw xavier catch one but i don't see flounder people pulling up flounder as much over by you 
Um, unless I'm just not seeing it or people not posting Flounder, it. Flounder, so Flounder used to be a lot more plentiful down here. Hmm. And I don't know what happened. This uh, this past year actually was the first year that I ever remember in my lifetime where they actually closed Flounder for a couple months. Okay. And and I, so I don't know if it's habitat. I don't know. You know, I mean, there's Protecting, a lot yeah. of conservation stuff going on yeah. uh, with them talking about changing limits for a bunch of stuff. Um, but I think, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to the flounder. We used to be able to see them all over the place. And now, you know, they, they're scarce. Right. Yeah, man. It's actually one thing we should talk about. Cause I know we're going to go into like, at some point about some fishing differences between me and you or our two states, oh, yeah. you know, um, yeah. limits are definitely like at the top of the list. Well, let's get into it. So like, all right. So redfish, I know we can, we can keep five. And one sure. can be a bull red, 27 can be or a bull red. Yep. So what is that in Florida? Yeah, so over in Florida, um, I used to say, like, depending on where you're at, but it's pretty much pretty much the same, pretty much the same now. And diff- they have FWC has this map in, like, five different regions on where you can and can't because we were locked down in Florida for redfish and trout for a while. Um, snook were locked down, you know, for a long time. Um but all of them are back open in different seasons. But was red that because fish, of that algae bloom or whatever? Well, we had the, the we had red. bad freezes, and the freezes killed a lot of killed a lot of um, a snook back in the day, you know. And then, but the red tide like took out took tide, out a yeah. lot of our yeah of our of our red uh, redfish and trout and just a lot of our fish all the time. Captains for clean waters, they're all up in Tallahassee and you know, putting in work, you know, to protect our, our grass flats, you know, because it's just all the drainage and the runoff and all types of just pollution in our water. Just, it's just terrible for red tide and all that algae buildup. But when it comes to redfish, um, yeah, we, we have, we have our slots too. Um, pretty much, pretty much for the most part, it's like 18 to, to 27 and one over, you can have one over, um, but you can only keep one in my area. I believe there are some parts above me where I think you can keep two. I don't really keep track of that because I'm, I'm only really looking at my zone for the most part. And my zone is pretty big. Um, and then trout, you know, we can only keep, uh, I think we can keep two. Yeah. We can keep two trout. Yeah. Right. You can only keep we, two trout. Yeah. We used to be able to keep five. Um, wait, am I thinking about this wrong? Man, I'm I'm in different terms right now because I'm fishing for freshwater trout right now. But yeah. um our trout, you know, we definitely can't keep as many as you guys. And we can only have one above 19 inches. So I think you guys you guys can have 25 and it don't matter how big they are. But I feel well, they have to they be have over to be 10 inches. They have they to be, be over 12. 12 yeah, or over. Up. And over, it doesn't over. matter. Yeah, and it could be as big as whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they actually, so this this, this kind of makes me mad. They put out a thing. They were uh, wildlife put out uh, an in, uh, something 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 intent that they were intending to change the limit. Okay. They put it up to the vote, and from my understanding, I didn't get to watch it, but I heard on another podcast they put it up to a vote, um, not the public, but whoever makes decisions, you know, the politicians. Uh, the money bags. Yep. Yeah, they all shot it down. It was a unanimous no. So, I mean, it. Dude, we're losing habitat like crazy, so that's going to affect things. And, and then, you're losing habitat, you're losing grass, I mean, marshland, you're losing a lot. And the, the, the limits haven't been changed in forever, like decades. So they were talking about, you know, reducing the limit down to 15, um, uh, making it, you have to have them 13 and a half inches and up to keep. I mean, it was some really good things. I was all about it. I was all about yeah. it. And then I found yeah, out they yeah. shoot it down. And then... Yeah. Uh, but then I just got an email not too long ago that they're uh, putting out surveys to see about the redfish limits, about trying, uh, hopefully trying to change the redfish limits. So hopefully when they come to something, hopefully that gets voted in and not shot down too. Because, yeah. I mean, we need to do something. Them limits haven't been changed in a long time. And, and yeah. you know. That's the funniest thing is like when I first started fishing in Louisiana, it was in 2016. And my first spot I ever went to was Pat Kayak, right? And that's, I have this picture of Mr. Eddie, man. He looks like a baby. He's like baby face. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's baby face, man. And, you know, be, because all that hard work, man, that he puts in so much hard work in that place. And then a hurricane comes and obliterates it. And then he, 
he gets right back right to over. it yep. and he puts it it just amazes me how he does it i mean he is he's just a offering a great service to, to our community but um i remember when i first went down there i caught my first red uh, the first day when i went out with matt and that was back when that gas station was still open on the corner mm-hmm. you know like that last gas station when you're turning right to go to pack yeah they were that they were still serving burgers and, and gas and stuff and i got a funny story about that place but i caught a red and it was like 14 inches and and, and matt was like it's a keeper i was like what are you joking? This is a keeper. I thought they got to be like 18 and it was, was just wild. 16. Yeah. 16. Yeah. It was just wild. And then I, and then I learned the limit was 25 because we were fishing the power lines all the way down. And I was catching like, you know, these little, little trout, but I'll tell you this, man. Um, it's no wonder why you, it's hard to come across a big trout there, yeah. you know, because you're just catching dinks and babies all the time, just killing them all. And, and especially, you know, where they're doing all the netting, I can only imagine like how many more fish, you know, that, you know, what area I'm talking about, right? Like mm-hmm. all the netting right there. It's like, I, I can only imagine all the byproduct that, that gets killed and stuff, but Hey man, you know, I know people are just trying to eat. I'm just, I love eating fish. I'm not just catching, oh, yeah. fish. I eat fish, you know me, I bring home fish. And so, but at some point, you know, I will say Florida, I didn't like it in the beginning when I was younger because I didn't understand it but they locked trout down and I was like, Oh, this, this is terrible. All I want to do is eat a sandwich and this is America and (laughs) I'm Asian and I want to eat this. This is, this is just dumb. And then they locked down redfish and I was like, Oh, this is just even more dumb. And then it was locked down for a few years. Now I'm out, now I'm out fishing and it seems like on average I'm catching 19, 20 inch trout on average. And the reds, you know, we got reds. They might be more spooky, and I got things to say about that later. But we're we have when you go out, you can see all of our three or four major fish that we have to offer. And so I attribute it to the fact that they were able to lock it down, and it really made me pretty mad in the beginning. But I totally understand, and I'm grateful for it because I'm catch we're catching fish, you know. Right. So. Yeah, if they don't do something, we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna run into some trouble. Yeah, so hey, you know who you should have on. I know, I know, I'm on right now. But if you ever wanted to do a special about the, you know, your local area, Sarah would be an amazing person to bring on. You know, Sarah Giles. I know the name. I'm trying to Sarah think. Sarah Giles, fly fishing girl. I made that video, fly fishing from her little yellow kayak. Oh She's yeah, all the time. But that's like her expertise is like Louisiana marshland and and water and habitat. Right on. Yeah, I want to get some biologists, some local biologists and stuff on. Because yeah, I'm, I want to focus a lot on uh, conservation with yeah. this, uh, with the podcast and on my channel. You know, I try and get little little tidbits in there, like you know, when you catch a fish, make sure like you wet your measuring board, you wet your hands when you touch them, so you don't mess up the slime coat. Because yeah. a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people uh, with the trout, you know, they catch and release, catch and release. Yeah, the fish swam off when I threw it back. Yeah, he swam off. And but you, but the, yeah right that's the thing you got delayed mortality you take the slime coat off then it gets infections and then anything else that happens to it it's too stressed out it can't survive yeah but i mean it's simple things that we can do to, tr- to try and you know keep the longevity of the fish Definitely. that way we don't run into issues like that for but sure just trying to educate a little bit at a time you know without beating i don't want to beat nobody over the head with it but yeah i get it man yeah, we need to we need to educate but definitely yeah, man. Hey, we also got some other differences, like when it comes to Florida and Louisiana. And I think a big difference um, is our water clarity. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like my first time, right? I was fishing in Louisiana and um, I bring over my Florida gear <clears throat> and I start fishing with um, just these colors I use, you know, root beers, chartreuse tails, which actually that one's fine. But like, root beer like all root beer or a lot of pearl type stuff and and i start like walking into the shops and stuff and all i see is like all these like fluorescence it's like it was like a new <laughs> world to me back in 2016 it's like everything's like bright and glow in the dark and like chartreuse everything and chicken head lures and like all of these the chicken on a chain chicken on chains and like all these things i've never what is the this is like a joke you know and 
I guess, you know, I started to learn like with this dirty water, you know, um, but I started to notice the difference in the two. And so it's like when I was fishing in Louisiana or when I go there, I feel like I can get away with way more than I can get away with in Florida. Right. So um, in Louisiana, you're always, you know, there's always a chance, you know, you can spook a fish with the drop of a paddle on your kayak or right. with your shadow. I've seen spooks, spooks fish with, you know, my shadow or whatever, but it's like in Florida, if you even get, depending on where you're fishing, which is a lot of areas, I mean, the redfish, I mean, once it sees you or anything in its environment changes or like a, here's a pat, I mean, that thing just darts away. Right. And you got, you got to fight like all these issues and be like super incognito, watch out for your shadow. Think about where you're putting stuff. So it's not clanking around. Think about where the tide's going so you can come up behind it or whatever you're trying to do. Look, stand on a, ta- you know, on your cooler so you can see way ahead and just get the edge in any way you can. But in Louisiana, like <laughs> there's some times where <laughs> I'll be fishing and I would like actually, you know, Rex would have like this new contraption and be like, try this new pad, you know, or, you know, paddle holder. And I'd like fall out, you know, cause we're like, you know, <laughs> doing research and development. And that red is just still chilling. Just like right uh-huh. now. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. Or, you know, I'd like miss six times. It, it's not even phased, you know? So y'all fish are just naturally more spooky or you think it's just because of the clear water? It's be, it's a lot of things, man. It's because of the clear water and because I know people think like, there's so many fishermen. There really is so many fishermen in Louisiana. But you guys got like a lot of places to hide. And you guys even got all of these areas that people don't even know if they're allowed to be in. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and yeah. and then you just got like all these secret places and your water's dirty and all this stuff. I'm not saying it's easier, okay? It's also hard fishing there too. But what I am saying is like um in Florida, like I said, Tampa Bay specifically. We're a peninsula, and then Florida's a peninsula, right? Right. Everybody fishes in Florida. Everybody. Like, you go to anyone's (laughs) garage, they have a rod. I mean, even if it's dusty, at least it exists, right, in their garage. Everyone's fishing. And so our fish are just so, so pressured all the time. We have – I feel like for every one guide you have in Louisiana, we've got 20. There, we just got a lot. It. It's just a it. lot. Yeah, it's just a lot. And Man, so I gotta get when, over there. Yeah, when I'm fishing over you, over your area, I just feel like I can get away with more because I'm so used to fishing all these scary fish that when I get over there, you, you know what I'm saying? Dude, talking about the dirty water, I remember when we that the day we gave Xavier the kayak going yeah. out there, and yeah. I said, "Man, the water is clear today." <laughs> and I don't remember if it was you. I, I think it was you. Or one of y'all was like, this is clear. I'm like, yeah, you can see almost this a foot clear. down. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness, man. Yep. No, bro. Like the, my home spots where I fish, like when I go from like a flat to a hole, like a channel, I can see eight, nine, ten feet down to the bottom. Like, yeah, no, like, I can see the here. grass. Yeah, I can see the grass, you know, and all that. So that's it's like a sandy bottom, huh? Or do y'all y'all have mud, or is it all? Yeah, sand? we got mud. Yeah, we got a lot of mud. Um, we got a lot of sand. I love finding mud, especially in Florida. Um, I know this isn't a how to fish Florida, you know, thing, but I you got to know where mud's at. It, I mean, you don't have to, but if you know where mud's, if you can find mud in Florida, when it's cold, you know, mud retains heat. Yeah, you know, and so when it's cold, like muddy areas are really great spots to fish in Florida because they're warmer. So, anyways, just a little tip. No, that's good. I'm write this down. Yeah, <laughs> I need to, I need to get over there, man. I need to, I need to get out there because I, I want to catch a snook. That's on the bucket list. Oh man, I wish you would come because that that that's uh that's a mission that you can accomplish fairly decently. It's not too too hard to do. When's the uh, when's the best time? All the time, man. Snook on top water on a low tide. I mean, it's just. Oh, I love. Top or if water. it's high tide and you want to skip skip baits underneath the mangroves, they're pretty much easy. They're they're pretty easy to know where they're at. You know. Snook's good to eat. Yeah, you. Yeah, so snook is great to eat. Um, but I also feel like people say it's great to eat just because you can't eat it as much. So the slot for snook 
it's a very hard slot to hit. Oh, I want to wow. say it's like 28 to 32 or something like that. Oh, and really? And it's only open twice a year. So, and you have to have a stamp. So if you don't have a stamp Jeez, um... and you don't hit that four inch slot and it's not one of those two times a year that the harvest is open for them, then you're not going to eat a snook. Good Lord. All right. So that's the snook. Redfish. All right. You said what? You can keep two? Yeah. No. Well, I can keep one where I'm at. You can keep one. And not a bull red. Uh, you can keep it over slot. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. Um, and, then, and that's one. And I think per vessel, I think you can keep like three or four or something like that. But I'm not a captain over there, so I don't know how many right. vessels you can keep. Yeah. And then trout is what? Yeah, you can keep, depending on where you're at as well, but I, I think you can keep two. I think two. That is. And, and it, just it might goes even in. be, hey, hey, it might be more than two, but I can tell you this. I only keep, I only keep two. Right. Yeah, so I think you can keep you can keep more than two. I'm terrible. I live here. I don't even know the limits. So <laughs> just don't go over them. You'll be all right. Yeah, I, there's literally times where I'm like on on a fish. I I'm really bad with these numbers and limits. That like I'll I'll be fighting a fish and catch a fish. And I'll be like, uh, Siri, call wife, and it's like calling wife. I'm like, what's the limit for redfish again? <laughs> <laughs> I always forget. Because it, and it gets that way because I'm always fishing somewhere different, you know. Right. So I'll like I'll be in a different state all the time. So I'm like, oh, what's the limit? I forget. What about flounder? I don't even know. I don't know the limit. <laughs> Dude, I love flounder. Flounder is delicious. Oh, that's different. You ever you ever stuff them with stuff? Yes, I've I've oh, had yeah. it. I've never done it myself, but it, it, yeah, because you can get four fillets off of flounder. You know. Right. Yep. So, you know, you just slice and then stuff it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The stuff it with crab meat and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. man. I love me some flounder, man. Yep. So you got, uh, you got your, you still got the Hobie, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. I have a Hobie. <clears throat> um, I have two. Actually, I, I bought, you know, Adam Whitbeck. Um, mm -hmm. I purchased his off of him before he, so, you know, before he went over to the paddleboard. He's back in the Hobie now, but I have his old, his old PA. Um, but I'm, right now I'm rigging up the new canoe because my son is getting old enough and that's the, that's the kayak I usually use for like a lot of sheep's head fishing when I bring him out. Um, but I'm rigging that one up so I can start getting on the water with him and teaching him the ropes of kayak fishing and safety. Nice. And then my third one that I use pretty regularly is my, um, the inflatable that, um, the sea eagle inflatable. So I use that for like for the backwaters of my neighborhood, um, you know, because I'm pretty close. So those are like the three I run right now. Yeah, I need to. I got I got an old um, a sin. That was the the first one that I went out with. Matter well, that trip we went with Xavier, I had that uh, trawler motor. Yeah, yep, I remember to it booking it. Yep. Um, but you know, once I got my Hobie, there was no looking back. Yeah, uh, but I I do want to get something something even lighter than the Ascend. The Ascend's about I don't know eighty ninety maybe 80 pounds i think mm -hmm. but i want something i can just you know throw in for, for small like skinny water little canals and stuff like yeah. that dude don't sleep on inflatables bro really i'm telling you man like i was really hesitant with inflatables because i was like oh man these things are pop oyster beds pop all these types of things i catch fish they have like hard spines on them like uh -huh. pop but uh like the sea eagle i have you can literally like, you can actually stab it like with a needle if you want to like st like put like five needle holes in it, and that sucker will still be inflated for like two days. Really? Yeah, because they like kind of like depending on the brand they like kind of self heal and then you can like repair it, you know. But hmm. my thought was like if it gets a hole, it just goes pop. Yeah. You know? But they're like, I mean, mine is the inflatable I use. They actually make um the coast guard inflatable boats oh wow okay so like yeah if you check out like see this isn't like a promotion or anything but if you check out like sea eagles website you can see how they have like the coast guard inflatable dinghies and everything yeah so it's pretty durable to check man. that out yeah, yeah they're pretty durable yeah and that you know that weighs like 15 pounds Oh yeah, definitely. Have then to you check just strap a cooler or a seat on it, and one on a rod holder, and you're now fishing those backwaters. You know, you got um the Hobie what 180, huh? With the 
180 drive. It yeah, I switched. Yeah, it's got the 180 in it. In it. I'm a, I want to buy that drive for mine, but I really want the 360. But dude, that's like <laughs> six grand for that kayak right now. Unreal, man. And the funny thing is, is like, okay, so I was at iCast when they unveiled that. And then I and then I also put up that video where they unveiled the Mike Ike um, Red 360, uh-huh. and and I've got like <laughs> okay. So the first thing is like this, right? I have the 180 drive. I use it once every ten trips. Really? Yeah, because it's like, all right, you have a Hobie, right? Mm-hmm. So this is any pedal drive. This is any kayak, really. When you're like fishing in your Hobie and say you're going to go fish a line, like a marsh line or something like that, you already know like when you pull up based on how the wind's going and the current's pushing you, like when you pull up, you already know if you're going to like slam the rudders to the left and like coast it or like you already know how to maneuver it in like the perfect way. You know what I'm saying? And when you're kayak fishing, you're already thinking ahead, right? So you're like, all right, I'm going to pull up here, but I'm going to let the current take me you know 20 feet here and keep fishing this line you're already kind of like thinking ahead and so it's like when i got the 180 i thought i was going to use it all the time i never use it it's because i'm so like locked into like the water and how it's moving my kayak that i'll like it just i never need to go backwards yeah i would use it a lot more (laughs) i can't tell you you're fishing lakes and stuff too no i'm just even in the canals and the bayou because one is one is lilies. A lot of times I'll get hit in the lilies okay. and I can't get through, so I have to pull out the paddle, back up, back up. The okay. wind kicks my butt all the time. So yeah. dude, I can't I can't tell you how many times I'll have to pull out really? a paddle to back out. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Maybe I, you I, would use it more than me, because I'm fishing more like open like if I'm fishing a mangrove island or something or a line, there's like I'm not fighting lilies and stuff. So like for me, I'd never really need my the only time I ever switch it into one eighty is if I'm, like, really trying to hover over a hole against the current or something. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I, no. I personally don't need it too much. I would I would use the crap out of it. And that's why I want, <laughs> like, that 360 because, I mean, there's a lot of times where all I need to do is scoot over and I can't. Sure. And yeah. I'm, I got to pull the paddle out. So I got to drop, you know, drop the rod, pull the paddle out, yeah. you know. And then I don't have the, the kick-up fins either. So every time yeah, I hit yeah. something. Dude, it's my, always something new, man. I've had to bend them, them, uh, them rods so many times to straighten them out and oh dude oh yeah hey so, there's a hack for that because i was bending my rods like crazy because like um i was always bending them at pack because i didn't i didn't the first time i didn't really realize like as soon as you cross the canal it's like all oh, oysters you know right and it's like ah, i was just hitting hitting my drives i have to like limp back to the thing i was like i, I broke it again but if you're ever looking for a hack, you know this hack already, but anybody watching this looking for a hack or listening, okay, I always keep two in my in my hatch, always. You know, like two fresh mm-hmm. mass. Is that what they're called? Masses? Mass, yeah. Yep. Okay, I always keep two, and I always keep an adjustable wrench because you got to have that for the bottom. You know, like right. if it's like jammed in there, fishing pliers will not work sometimes. Um. But once you get back, instead of like buying new ones, I just take the hitch off of my truck and then bend them back in the hole. In the hitch? (laughs) In the hitch hole. Yeah. And you can get like micro adjustments on that thing, you know? That's awesome. So like, I can't even get one of mine off. It's in there. So like the the part that it screws into spins inside the the drive. Oh my god! So it won't back out. Yeah. So I have to stick the whole thing in a vice and, and like, and I'm still able to, I'm still able to do it, but you know, that's what I got to do to get it done. Yeah. So, and it's, I'm, you know, I'm just debating cause I got to get new fins. Both of my fins are dry rod. I'm going to end up going out there and just not, you know, I'm just going to have to paddle back one day cause it's going to yeah. fall apart. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, <laughs> and the two little, um, two little nipples on the, on the each end that I guess hold it lined up. So when you shove it in the kayak, it keeps it mm-hmm. right up. Both of those are broken off. <laughs> so so it's like uh, do i want to because i can get the you know the fin replacements for like 100 bucks yeah or do i put out you know the grand for the uh for the for the 180 but yeah it's not just the 180 that's the good thing it's the kick up fins yeah. because How, how's the actual hole like how's your kayak is it in good shape oh yeah the kayak's fine 
Dude, kind of yeah. Straight. Like I don't want to. Just... And until I can afford, you know, uh, the 360, which you know, six, that's just hard to put out. Um, or maybe I'll wait until they get something new and I can buy one on on Facebook Marketplace for half that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna. I just want to go with the the 180. Definitely. Yeah, I got to test out the 360. I'll tell you what, it's awesome. It's like, but that's my biggest. My biggest drawback is the price, and of course, and even this, bro, even the standard PAs are up in price now. I yeah. mean, oh, yeah, everything's more expensive. Every, everything's up. My biggest concern about the 360 are the gears and like stripping the gears. Okay, you know what they remind me of, kind of? Um, you know, those little uh, battery powered like little jeeps that kids drive you know yeah yeah like you hot get from wheels Walmart. Or power wheels yeah. yeah power wheels okay you remember like when those things start to come to the end of their life and you hit the gas and it's like you can hear the plastic gear spinning yep. they're like Burr. it's because those teeth have like bent you know yeah the teeth worn down and worn down and that's that's like the fear and i see that a lot not a lot but i see though that's like the area of breakdown in the 360s is like that area and at least in the beginning and so i'm i don't know now i could be speaking out of line but i'm hoping that 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 is going to be like a strong enough you know to like stand the stand the length of time to be able to be used for like five six ten years if you want to like how often do you have to replace those i'm not really sure but i can say when i had it on the water dude that kayak unbelievable micro adjustments you know, you can like be lined up with the dock and just go. It's yep. like wild. I know. Bro, yeah, my buddy, my buddy just sold his, and I didn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't have the money for it. I wanted to get it from him so bad, uh, but I'm yeah. like, man, I don't need to be spending that money. Money I don't have on something I don't really need because I already got. You know, I already got the kayak. Yeah. So, would you ever want a boat? Did you ever want a boat, or are you just yeah. all kayak? Actually, um, so I'm I'm in the middle of writing out a script for a YouTube video um, that it's, it's basically the gist of it. The title is going to be, um, you should just buy a boat. Right. right? I, know that, so, I know that term. Yeah. So I'm going, I'm writing out this script where it's all of the comments and the things I've heard over the years on YouTube videos. That's like, well, with that money, you should just buy a boat. Yeah. So, I'm not going to lie. So there are times in my mind and you know, like I'm Yak Tribe out. I'm like, I'm the owner of Yak Tribe. Okay. So there are times where, where I think, all right, I'm going to get old one day, you know, and I'm going to like, what am I going to do? Am I going to be 70 years old? Like Yak, Yak Tribe, you know? Yeah, you are. Like my knees, you know, and I'm just like killing myself trying to be in a kayak. Or am I going to be like, Oh yeah, boat. This is awesome, you know. Um, I've had boats in the past, and and by that time, you know, my kids, I hope, will take Yak Tribe to, to another place I'd never even see, you know, if if they want to. Um, but to answer your question, uh, yes, I have wanted a boat in the past. Yes, I could even see myself having a boat in the future, you know, to like um, bring my family out on. I have four kids, you know, or like a pontoon boat, something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, I've had boats in the past, but I can't really see myself getting away from kayak fishing. And the thing is, is like, I also have a Bixby, like a motor for my kayak. Yep. And, um, I'm not against putting it. And that's where I get the most comments is like, why don't you just get a boat? Okay. So you have a three, when I bought my kayak, it was 3,500. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, you have a $3,500 kayak. You've got a, depending on if you buy it new or used, you definitely got like a grand type tied up in a motor, like a Bixby. Okay. So now you're like 4,500 bucks. Right. And you can go like trolling motor and like outfit stuff, you know, you can be way under that, but let's just say for my setup, bare bones with a motor, I'm, I'm rocking like 4,500 bucks. I can tell you this. I can go on Facebook marketplace right now in my, in St. Petersburg, Florida and get a pretty nice boat for $4,500. Because people, it's like a dime a dozen out here. Like people buy boats and sell them, and people die and they sell their dad's boats. Like right. they don't care out here in Florida. At Man, I'm gonna have to go out there and get me one. 
I was going to say you should come out here and shop for your, your Hobie or whatever, because people, old people, they buy kayaks. I used to actually buy and sell kayaks on a regular basis because old people would buy a kayak because the chiropractor or the doctor would say, Hey, you know, kayak, it's great for your back. So they'd like, they'd go to Bill Jackson's and drop like a few thousand dollars. And then they realize I can't sit for that long and they'd sell it for like thousand dollars for two, you know? And anyways, so I'm going through this script, writing the different, you know, why I won't, why I shouldn't just buy a boat. But without being funny, my main things are like this. I have like actual storage issues, right? I, I can't store a boat. Um, maintenance issues. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm not one of those guys who just can hop under a hood of a car and be like, well, it's that bolt right there. And you just, you know, <laughs> like, I'm just not that guy. I'm the guy that like, I'll work on my house. Like I'll do drywall and all that, but I can't, I'll have to call my brother and be like, bro, I got problems with my, my, my right. engine. So maintenance issues, you know, they say boats are like a whole, you know, just black hole. I get that. Uh, cause two boats I had, they were kind of like that. Um, you got to put money into it if you're not a mechanic and then also like sneaking up on fish. And so in Florida where I fish, I just, I just put out this video where I was like, I was on top water reds. I was like pulling in these reds on top water and here about, you know, 50 yards away from me, it goes from a flat to a hole. And these boats could not get on the six inches of water. I was doing yep. top water reds on. And it's like, I'm so sneaky. And I was just talking to a friend at church and he was like, I see all these reds. He's in a John boat, you know, he's like, I see all these reds. And it's like, man, every time I pull up on them, they just run away. I don't even got a chance. And I was like, why are they running away? They never run away from my kayak. I wasn't being snarky. I was asking. He was like, I mean, I'm just running the trolling motor, you know? And I, and I was like, dude, you zoomed up, you zoomed up on the flat mm -hmm. and then you stopped. So it was like, boom, and like all the water, right? And then you hit that mount and through your trolling motor, splash. And then you're just yep. bloop, 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 going through the water. Of course they're running well, away. They're hearing it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like these differences and these issues that I have on why I won't really just make a boat my priority fishing vessel because I've had too much success. I, I say that like super humbly. I'm not like, a, I'm not, I don't catch a ton of fish. I'm not that guy. But I'm saying like, I've had more success fishing off of a kayak being super sneaky by myself and just sneaking up on fish. I also don't want a boat because I know I'm yak tribe and everything, but I don't want to take people on my boat. I like single, <laughs> you know, like you ever, you ever fish on a boat with somebody? Oh yeah. Okay. Here's the problem with fishing on a boat with somebody. You're both good fishermen. Say you're a good fisherman. Like me and you say you and I go out. Let's say we're average fishermen, but here's the thing in your mind, when we pull up on a marsh piece of marsh or a mangrove, you're going to have a way that you want to fish it. I'm going to mm. be like, I want to go fish like this. And it's just not going to be fun for one of us. Cause we're right. going to be like catering to the other person. You know what I'm saying? No, I, get it. Like, I get it. Yeah. When Adam and I go out or three of us go out, it's just like, hey, peace out. I'm going to be on this mark. Right. I'm gonna be <laughs> we'll launch together, but then that yeah. you just start spreading out. I'll be like, hey, holler if you're on the fish, and then we'll fish the general area together. Right. Yeah, it's like that. So I don't, I got, I have a boat, but so when I, I had the same thing. When I got my kayak, I got it for 2500 on Facebook Marketplace. Great deal because it was, they were $3,500 at the time. Uh, brand new and this kid had i mean dude they didn't even have any any like sh oyster rash on the bottom like no scratches no nothing it nice. had a little toolbox came with it you know a little tackle box that fits on the side had a rod holder i mean this thing was immaculate like yeah. it just came you know just came out the store and then you know it only took me two weeks to to make it look like <laughs> look like it had yeah. been through a war <laughs> but yeah. um when just just the twenty five hundred I spent, people were like, man, you should you could have just got a boat, you could have got a boat. I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't. So and you could have, yeah, but I mean, twenty five hundred, you're probably gonna get a boat you have to work on. So yeah, probably. You know, I go ahead and go ahead and just get that kayak. And then it came time when I I bought my boat, and then a bunch of my buddies was like, oh yeah, you'll never use that kayak again. You'll never use that kayak again. And I never under I never understood that mentality because yeah. people have trucks, 
but that don't mean they stop riding their motorcycle. Right, you know right. what I mean? It's and it's, it's a different a, application. Yeah, it's a completely different experience. Sure. I mean, fishing out of a kayak is a completely different experience than fishing out of a boat. Mm-hmm. So you know, the, it, it's not it's not one or the other. It's a both and type of thing. Yeah. And to yeah. you, like we were saying, when the, the the six inches of water, I went out the other day in my favorite super secret fishing hole uh, that you actually know about. Because I think that was one of the places we uh we fish. I'm not gonna say it out loud just in case yeah, anybody's yeah. you know I got to you. Kind of creep in creep in on the uh I on got it. You. But um you know it used to be like a cypress forest, and now it's nothing but cypress stumps. You know towards the bank and everything. Yeah. And it's been several times. Now, a few people know about it. You know you'll get kayaks and uh, stuff out there every now and then. Um, but I see boats that are out in the middle of it. They can't get to that edge. You know, right. I've been there before where I'm pulling red after red after red, and I'm watching them on the edge as far as they can come in, not catching yeah. anything. They get frustrated and leave. Right. And then while I was out there the other day, I'm doing the same thing. I mean, they, they, they were everywhere. They're stacked up in there. Yeah. And this, I mean, you know, this $90,000 boat with big old high uh, platforms and everything come out there, and they stop, and they're looking around, and they're like, uh, and then they just left. And I'm yeah. like, man, you guys don't even, y'all don't even know. Yeah, because uh, you know, I mean, out there, it's rare to have to throw a fish back because he's too small. It's usually because okay. you already got, you know, there's too many bull reds. Yeah, you got your yeah, yeah. And I love man, yeah. It's just nothing. I like feel that. that. Yeah, cause like we got this spot right. It's like in by my house, and it's when I do my sheep's head fishing. So when we hit like November, December, the water's like cold, getting cold. Mm-hmm. Where it's like we our sheep's head are just like stacked. They stack up. And so I got this spot, right, where it's like you have to launch at an actual boat ramp, okay? But then you have to go through a residential, um, like, inner, like waterway, you know, houses on the water, like canals, okay? So boats, yeah, you can still get there. But then it goes through, like, this crazy mangrove tunnel, and boats can't get there, only kayak. And it goes to like this, and it's like super low. You gotta like go under mangroves. There's like crabs, you know, tree crabs fall on your kayak, all that kind of stuff. Save those for bait. And then a tree crab, you know, like those mangrove crabs. No, like fiddler crabs. We have fiddler crabs, and they're like little, yeah, they're like little crabs. But, anyways, my point is you like zigzag through this thing, and then it opens up, and there's like this old abandoned dock, and the sheep's head are just stacked over there. The only way to get there is through kayak or through paddleboard or something like that, you know? And I'm, like, addicted to finding areas like that, whereas, I don't know, man. Maybe that's just my excuse for fishing out of a kayak and not getting a boat. No, I mean, uh, no, I loved it. I love it. Because I get in the, uh, they got a spot right here by the house that I uh, went fishing recently and caught a couple bass. that I couldn't find them anywhere else, but I found them back there, and you couldn't, you couldn't get over the spot. And I also feel like, I just feel like you catch more fish in a kayak because you're limited, like your brain. And it's a psychological thing where like when I had a boat, I was like zooming. And I know you could be like more disciplined, but I was zooming around the spots. But in a kayak, you really do. You look at points different and you look at things on the bank different and you're like, you can't just zoom around so fast. So you really are like really fishing that area. You really are. And that's when you, I feel like in your, in the kayak. And if you think about your fishing history, cause you, you've been in a kayak for a long time. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling and maybe I'm wrong. So I just have a feeling that some of your best spots or like your spots that you're like, Ooh, I know there's fish there. It's probably, you probably found it in your kayak, more spots in your kayak than your oh, boat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you're like really tediously going through that area. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're limited. You know you're not going to go be able to go, you know, 15 miles a day yeah. in your kayak. So you got you to gotta kind of pick a spot and then you, you, then you like pick it apart. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm in my kayak, when I'm in my kayak, dude, like... I mean, I might stay in a one mile area, but I'm picking it apart. Like yeah. I'm, you know, it might take me 30 minutes to go down a bank that if I was in my boat with the trolling motor might only take me 10 minutes. Yeah. Or you might pass them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like, see ya. And in, and in pressure, you know, in high pressured waters, they, they, they start learning that trolling motor sound. Yeah. 
And you know what's funny in my area, in my specific area, I have seen a handful of guides that started out as kayak fishermen. All they were were kayak fishermen, like live and die by the kayak. Now they're in flats boats and they're smart because they get those really nice ones that, you know, can go in three, four or five inches of water. Yep. And they don't use trolling motors and stuff. They only use push poles. They're basically trying to be a kayak fisherman, but in a skiff. And they have some of the most successful guides and pulling in fish. And they start off as kayak anglers because they they know these, they know the holes, they know the spots. And now they get real guide service. Yeah. That's getting real popular. I see them all the time now, those little skiffs with the platform. They got a platform over the motor where they push pole and a platform on the front. It's like they're trying uh, to be kayak anglers. They're trying to be. They're just a little, you know. Well, it's easy to take somebody out as a guide, you know, in the same boat. You can just, just, but the, uh, a lot of, uh, fly fishing from those. Yeah. And you know, Miss Lisa, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Miss Lisa, Mr. Eddie, you know how they got that John boat and they put that tower on it. Yeah. Um, Rex and I were fishing it a few years ago and we're just like, let's just put the let's just try it let's just do this thing you know let's just put the kayaks up and um we took it out for like a week straight we're like we're gonna give this boat because we were staying there for like a month so we'll do a week of like boat content and there was a moment where we were on the tower and i'm smiling because we're just like (laughs) catching these fish catching these fish big fish it was just a great day and we both looked at each other we were on the top of the tower together and you know when you got three hundred pounds up there, it's like, yes. Whoa! oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're like trying to be super still, but we both look at each other. And we're like, we basically knew the deal. We were like, this is awesome. This is really awesome. You know, I, but I, I want to get uh. So I got I got I got a surface drive like a little mud boat. Yeah. And uh, I've been wanting to get out there, especially for a video, and just I got one of them like little giant ladders. Yeah. I want to just stand it up and strap it down to the boat yeah. with some just some ratchet straps. Yeah, and I got the uh, I got the, you know I got the Minn Kota trolling motor with the remote, so I can control it from up on top of the ladder. I'm, I'm going so I'm gonna do one of these days. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna be a cool ass <laughs> video for sure. But I mean, I just think it would be hilarious and I, it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But I want to build a platform for it eventually. You know, yeah. nothing too big, maybe three, four foot high. Um, yeah. Just to do that, but. I'm getting yeah. I'm getting a little bit more braver on my Hobie because I mean I watched yeah. you stand on a nice or stand on the armrest of your uh your yeah. chair yeah uh, yeah it's it's that's 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 ridiculous but yeah I mean they're sturdy enough it's just yeah. I guess I'm just not confident enough in it yeah or just throw cooler I I throw a cooler and stand on that in the back yep yeah but you were saying fly fishing um I do a little bit of fly fishing it's like if it's like a pie chart, it would be like 1%. Oop. Right. You know, I'm actually fly fishing this week. So I'm out here in Georgia and um, I just taught my son how to use a fly rod. And um, yeah, we just caught like, I caught nine, 10 trout on the fly. We just ate them all for dinner at the campsite. Nice. And he caught a few, his very first few, um, That's awesome. just using like tiny little bugs, you know, little yeah. fly. And the rainbow trout just murdering them. Um, so we were doing that. But I caught um, – where I got to catch my first red on fly was in Louisiana because I was like, if there's going to be redfish who will eat on a fly, it's going <laughs> to be here because you pretty – you know, their their reds were much more plentiful. So I caught a few over there. But back here at home, what I, what I want to do one day just to get better at fly fishing is do the same thing that I did when I wanted to stop using cut shrimp is I just went out kayak fishing and only brought lures. And then I was like forced to have to do it, you know? Yep. So I think one of these, I was going to say days, but let's say one of these years, one of these years, (laughs) I'm going to leave all my rods at home and just bring a fly rod and just have to suck it up and try, you know? That's what I do when I want to learn a bait, man. I just bring that, that bait, that lure and, uh, you know, bring two or three of them and, just got to but the thing is is that you know you can you can catch the fish on it but the whole but when you got a new bait that you're not confident in the whole time you're throwing it you're thinking about that oh, man i bet you they biting on this i, I bet know. you they biting on that i just and you, don't, the skunk. So you don't give it the time yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm scared of the skunk bro <laughs> gotta do it gotta do it gotta put it in your hand 
That's actually I, one. Speaking of skunks, um, I'm actually putting out Yak Tribe's releasing here in the next few weeks. We're releasing, you know, the flags that go on the back of your kayak. Yep. Like the red flags, like the safety flags. Yep. When you're towing them, so we're releasing those like Yak Tribe designed ones. Um, we're actually home making them, like literally my oh, mom nice. sewing them and I'm pressing them. Awesome. And because like I wanted like the best quality gear, you know, right. not like this two stitch seam stuff that breaks apart. It's just so annoying. But I'm also um, we're gonna be selling black, like the same flag. But it's all black, not red. And it has the word skunk with the silhouette of a skunk on it. So, like, when you go out fishing with a group of guys, whoever gets skunk has to keep that flag tied to the back of his kayak until the That's next awesome. time y'all meet up. Yeah. That's awesome. Man, are we, we need to do that um, that meetup that got canceled twice because of COVID. Oh, I know, bro. Yeah, the Alabama I was looking, one. I was looking so for that. That place looked awesome, man. It, it is awesome. awesome. Yeah. And Vicky keeps hitting me up about it. So like Yak Tribe, you know, we're 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 still doing our thing and we're still we're still rolling, man. So I'm I'm hoping to do more more of that stuff, you know, soon. So I appreciate you for, you know, even supporting that when we put it up. Oh yeah, man. Definitely. You uh your your camper got destroyed, didn't it? Absolutely destroyed. That was like a sad thing that really tested like our faith because not really like really tested our faith you know but obviously you know we're christians and so yeah. it's like you know we don't we try not to hold on to earthly possessions and like covet items and you know just that type of thing you know like love an item so much that if it's right. gone it just rocks our world but it's like when that when that camper got destroyed in that hurricane in Louisiana and we was in high ground. We moved it all to the church, you know, all that stuff. And it broke our hearts, man. Cause it's like two of our kids were raised in that camper. Yeah. Memories, man. Memories. Uh, so many memories of y'all people coming in into the camper. I mean, we cooked dinners and lunches for people out that camper. Um, it was just so many memories and it was just hard to see it just like ripped up and messed up. And yeah, yeah, that was tough. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if you've seen any of the uh the videos on my channel with the hurricane. That that was Ida, wasn't it? The same one that got the call? was it Ida? I don't know. I blocked it out of my memory. Yeah, I hear you. But if you if you I had moved here to Lafitte um three months before Ida hit. And yeah. talk about rock my world. And I mean I, you just have to go check it out. Go on the on the channel. I got a, a playlist with Hurricane Ida. Just watch like yeah, the first couple. And um because I've, you know, I mean, I've lived here all my life in Louisiana. We've had storms. Like even Katrina didn't affect me much. Like the house I was living in was fine. Uh, you know, it sucked because it took two weeks just to get back home, and there was a lot of infrastructure stuff that affected me. But you know, I personally, with my personal possessions, wasn't really affected. So Katrina wasn't. I mean, of course, it was a big deal, but it wasn't as yeah. impactful on me yeah. as like as this was Ida. So this is the first time I actually experienced the hurricane, you know, jacking my stuff up, but, Dude. uh, I, uh, but I'm thankful for it, man. I mean, it, that what's what builds character. I wouldn't give up what I've, uh, how I've learned and, and grown from it. So. Yeah, man, I have this one story. I don't know if you have time for it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I like, I swore I would never tell this story ever <laughs> <laughs> because it, it really shows it's like it's like it's really bad for my character you know like the my who i am as a person uh -huh. <laughs> it's like defaming you know like defacing all those things okay so i was in i was in florida when i lived in florida when katrina hit mm -hmm. okay and growing up growing up you know like people had snow days yeah. we had hurricane days where it was just yeah. like I was always boarding up houses and I, I just grew up in that environment. I never really, I never really like people who got hit by hurricanes. I was just like, we've been hit by hurricanes. Like it was a big deal. And I remember when hurricane Katrina hit, I was young, you know? Uh, but it wasn't like a, that significant of an event for me because like y'all are so far away from where I am. Right. You know? And yeah, I knew like I knew like people were displaced and all these things, but 
later on in life, I learned like how, how much that affected like homes and people and like destroyed lives. And like, I, I felt the full weight of that. I, I understand. So let me just say that I understand. That, right. Okay. So here in 20, it was probably like 2018 or 2017. Okay. So <clears throat> Xavier comes to an Alabama meetup, Gulf Shores, Alabama. We have a meetup and we're fishing. And we get them, and he brings one of his interns. You know, he's always like in the community and stuff, mm-hmm. and like shining light and doing good things. So he's got one of his interns with him. He's probably like 17, 18 years old. So, man, this is such a shame. So we get done fishing, and we're eating at Chick Fil A, and we're just kicking it, talking about old times. Oh, remember when we fished Louisiana? This and that, da 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 da, all this type of stuff. We're just kicking it, and is. And his uh, intern says, well, when are you all coming back through? I'd love to fish with you guys. I said, man, we're coming back through soon. And he's like, dude, you got to Yes, you got to come. You got to come through. You got to come through. I was like, yeah, man, you know it. I'll be coming through like Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think it's funny. But his face, he lived through that. Oh, man. Like he lived through New Orleans Katrina. And his face went from loving me and wanting me to be there to no. and Xavier. It was a solemn moment. Xavier goes, uh, hey, Heath, just want to let you know his entire family was affected by this. And I'm just going to let you know, uh, as your friend, because I love you, never, ever say that again. Because if you do say that in front of the wrong person, they could, they might kill you. And I was like, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Forgive me. Ah, I was like falling Jeez. off my sword. I'm the worst person alive. But, bro, that is like one of my most embarrassing moments or like times I ever felt. <laughs> you know, it's like I didn't realize how messed up that would say to say that. But I'm a bigger person now. I'm a new person. Yeah. I will never make that joke again. Well, it's weird. if I mean, like if you don't – if you're not affected – you know, directly by it. it, like you're so detached from it that it, yeah, things dude. like that will slip without even thinking about it until you see how it's affected somebody, and I then know. that's when it becomes it's real. Like, now it's yeah. like, it, it's like the realest thing ever. Don't be messing yeah. around telling jokes. But yeah, yeah, man, I was thankful for Xavier and his interns grace that day because he <laughs> so much grace. I'm so sorry I said that. <laughs> now I understand yeah, the full weight dude. of what happened. Dude, he is, man. I love him, man. Where is he at now? Is, I know oh, he's... Didn't he go to Florida? Dude, yeah, he moved to Florida, and I think he's, like, in Alabama now or something. I got to catch okay. up with him. So. Yeah, because yeah, I, I know he was at he was at the seminary down here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say that's... Is that how I met him? Man, I don't know. That I don't know. I feel like you just kind of met organically through kayak fishing. Yeah, I'm getting old. My memory's not so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Look, Did you? We gotta, uh, we gotta fish. We gotta get back on the water. Yes. Today. Yes. I was about. I was exactly. You can come what sleep in the Yak Tribe bus. Come to Florida. Yeah. Come Heck to yeah, Florida. Dude. You can sleep in the bus. It's got AC and everything, and we'll get on some snook. Yep. We we'll have to plan that out, man. I'll look at my calendar and I'll get with you because I can do some uh some swapping 100%. some ships around to get over there. Um. That'd be awesome. But yeah, man. And then whenever you're ready to come down here, I'm actually. Uh, actually, this Sunday, I'm going to my mom's house and pick up a bed. I have a, a spare room in this house. I moved to this house uh, two years ago. So uh, I'm going to have a spare room with a bed. So anytime you want to come down to Lafitte. and uh, How far got, are you from, like, fishing fish reds? Like, across the across the road. Like, I'm, I'm, like, across the bayou from my house. Yeah. So there's a spot right across where I go fishing. I go bass fishing there. But I catch redfish every time I go bass fishing right there. Mm. And then, you know, I mean, there's, there's tons of places. But as far as kayak fishing, um, you know, that super secret spot I was talking about earlier, that's about an hour away. Gotcha. Which, you know, okay. which is nothing, but you're almost yeah. guaranteed reds over there. Yeah, man. So, that's what's up. You're in a great spot dude. to keep making content, man. And I always just, who was I talking to? Talking to you about somebody recently. And we were basically like, I don't know how uh, Vinny hasn't like blown up. Like, I mean, like, you know, because 
you have like some of the most underrated content out there. <laughs> I was like, dude, you know, just your consistency, I, man. I think it's gonna pay off for you one day. I've been told that it's because your content's so, many so good. People. The quality of your content, yeah. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, you know, I you know I put a lot of hard work into it, and then I look at it, and I'm like, man, I, I, the algorithm hates me. I don't know, I don't know why. Dude, but you know, maybe it's just not it. my time yet. And yeah, maybe it's just not my You're time. You're gonna be yet, happy one day happen. when all those videos stack up, and then you hit that point where everyone's watching all your old videos because they wanted to know, yeah. you know, like that. It just comes with that consistent me, consistency, man. It's just like. Well, I made up my it's mind when happen. I started when I started the channel. I'm like, I'm gonna do it or die trying. I was like, I'm I've, yep. I've started a lot of things and and never went through with it. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? This is gonna I'm just gonna do it. And then, to be honest, which I enjoy it so daggone much that you know it gets discouraging every now and then when you know when I'm like growing like a, like I think I should or everyone else thinks I should. Yeah. But you know what? I get out there. I'm fishing. I'm making videos. I enjoy the whole process. So yeah. The, you know, what I, just, I tell myself is like. Even if this social media thing or content thing doesn't like blow up for me or pay off, at least I have all the memories of me fishing. Yep. And when I'm, you know, 80 years old, I could pull out my old hard drive and watch my fishing <laughs> adventures. You know, like yep. at least I did it for myself. It's like my own diary. Oh, and then your kids get to see it too. Like yeah, I, I would like love to guy. have, I would love to have like a YouTube video from when my dad was younger and his cousins Dude. going out and doing things, you know, I'd love to be like, cause I hear the stories and the stories are great. You know, yes. you, you got, you know, but I would have loved to have seen some of it, but yeah, definitely. Man. But that's, that's the whole thing. So, but the hours up and I want to respect your time, man. I know you're out there camping with your fam. Dude. So I'm gonna let you get back to them. I really appreciate you coming on, brother. Yeah, we'll have you on again. I Definitely gonna get you on here again. Yeah, man. I hope you have me back. We can talk about some other things for sure. Yep. But um we sure maybe you shall. can even teach me a little bit about some talk to me about how to catch for bass or catch bass or something. I don't know, man. But it's Heck always yeah. a pleasure hanging out with you, bro. Well, tell everybody uh where they can find you on your on your uh platforms and yak tribe and all that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. We got, you know, for me, you know, you can find me at Heath Panganabin on Instagram, Heath Panganabin on, on YouTube as well. But um, even if you don't follow me, if you're into fishing, kayak fishing, fishing from just fishing, fishing, whatever, follow Yak Tribe. It's just at Yak Tribe on Instagram or our website is yak-tribe.com. And that's getting revamped with a whole bunch of different new things and new products coming up. So it's pretty much where it's at, man. I appreciate you guys. Right on, man. Yes, All right, sir. guys, so we do this every Tuesday or Wednesday, according, uh, depending on my work schedule. Just letting you know, if you don't want to watch it live on YouTube, you can always catch it wherever you get your podcasts. Peace!